Hey everyone, how's it going? This is a part two video for my Tika Shortish Barrel, 21 inch barrel, 7 more rim mag. Anyone who's watched the channel will remember part one that I did at the start of the year. I had intentions of getting this video cracked out pretty soon after part one, but as you know, COVID happened and it's been a chain rolling effect of things since then where I just haven't got around to it. So here we have it, part two. What I pretty much want to cover off in part two is the truing process or validating is another term it's called um, for a rifle load for shooting long range. What this is is we've taken out whether it's factory ammo or a reload that we've taken and we're shooting in the rifle and we've got it zeroed and it's shooting straight and it's good to go. What we're going to go and do now is we're going to go and shoot it at long range to confirm the drop of that load. With truing a load or validating a load what we're doing is we're taking a given muzzle velocity and we're going to go and shoot it at long range to confirm what that muzzle velocity is so that we have confidence in the rifle so that when we dial on our scope at say 600, 500, whatever it may be, our trajectory is going to match up to what we dial for. What we're doing with truing or validating is we are confirming the drop of our rifle for the projectile that's being fired at long range so that we know that what we're dialing on the scope and the results we're getting from our ballistic tool to give us that drop is all matched up. The key thing that we're confirming is the muzzle velocity. That is the one thing that we need to confirm and finalize. With reloading you get a, a ballpark velocity from the chronograph. Sometimes if you've got a good chronograph like a lab radar they're pretty bang on but sometimes it's just a ballpark you need to confirm it and then with the likes of factory ammunition it's very rarely accurate. Sometimes it's on the money but very rarely will you actually see the same results out in the field. Everything else that gets provided to us such as our ballistic coefficients, our bullet weights, uh, the setup of our rifle, the scope height, our barrel twist, all those things are things that are knowns and we have given to us and we can dial into the app as knowns. Including atmospherics, obviously you need to retrieve your atmospherics but they're knowns that you put into the app. When we're truing, it's the muzzle velocity that we need to confirm. One thing I will touch on really quickly is probably on the subject of atmospherics and things like ballistic coefficient. When you're putting all of that into your app, when you're truing and shooting at long range, it is crucial that you have all of that information correct. It's crucial that you have the correct atmospherics for your current conditions and your current location correct. Because if that information isn't correct, the results you're going to get for your finalised muzzle velocity are not going to be correct. Make sure the good data goes into the app to give you a good result that comes out into your dial going onto the scope. When we're shooting, there's obviously a few tools we can use. The main one I use is just a basic online uh, app on my phone called Shooter. There's a few others, Strelock Pro and a range of different ballistic apps you can use. You can, from the basic entry level ones that are about $7 I think for Shooter, right up to the full sing and dancing apps like Applied Ballistics for around $50 I think. That's what you use as your start point, a sort of a ballistics app and then once you're trued and all set up you can run your drop charts as quick reference points. The other tool that you can use is Kestrels. They are probably the top ends all sing and all dancing thing. They can give you your atmospherics, your wind, everything and you can put all your data into the Kestrel in a full ballistics app package and it spits out everything you need. I don't have a Kestrel, they're pretty damn expensive but I would like one. So what distances are we going to shoot when we're truing? The, that is, that's pretty much up to you. I could get really into the nitty gritty of where you should do a proper true from and by that I mean you're calculating where your projectile is going into transonic and subsonic and then you're coming a percentage back of that and you're shooting out to that distance to true that supersonic range of your trajectory but for simplicity's sake you just need to true out to the maximum range that you're going to shoot that rifle so if it's just a hunting rifle and you're only shooting deer out to three or four hundred meters on the dial you only need to true out to four or five hundred meters so you can confirm that range that you're shooting if you want to shoot out to a kilometer then you need to true out to a kilometer one key point i'll make with this is the further you go, the finer the adjustments get. So the further you go and the further you true, the more accurate your true is going to be. The reason being, variations at distance become larger. One click on the dial has a bigger effect at 800 than it does at 400. 
If you're only shooting to say 400 meters, there's a lot of error, so you're not necessarily getting that accurate muzzle velocity for that load for the environmental conditions, if that makes sense. However, it's all relative to how far you want to shoot. If you're only shooting to 500, true it to 500 or 600. If you're shooting out to a kilometre, you need to true out to a kilometre. One key point with your truing and you're shooting that long range target is you are looking at elevation. Don't worry about the windage. If you've got a square, round or whatever target and your elevation through the middle, your round's hitting left or right, depending on what the wind is doing, if that elevation is good, then your drop and your muzzle velocity is good. There are certain situations where wind does come into play and wind can affect elevation, but that's really getting nitty gritty. I think the key point for this is you really want to choose a day with the best conditions to true, because if you're truing in poor, really strong, windy conditions, it's really going to make it hard work. You want to get a nice, calm day. A bit of wind is okay, because if you're hitting a little bit left or a little bit right, that's not too bad. You're really looking at, at that elevation. So just to give you a brief example, let's say that this phone of mine is my target downrange, and I am truing my muzzle velocity. I've put all my info into my ballistics app. I've put in my suspected muzzle velocity, whether it's from my ammunition packet or my chronograph is my start point, and it's given me my dope to put onto my dial. I'm going to dial that up, I'm going to take the shot. Let's say my first round hits low, I'm hitting at the bottom of the plate or just below the plate. I shoot again, I'm hitting at the bottom of the plate, shoot again, bottom of the plate. I'm shooting low. Alright, I work that out. In order to start bringing my dial up and get onto centre of target, I think I need to add about another half MOA to my dial, say two clicks. I dial that on, I take the shots again. Bang, in the middle, bang, in the middle. Bang, in the middle. Cool. Elevation is good. What I'm doing now is I'm recording that dial that I had on my scope. I'm recording the range that that was shot and everything that goes with that. And I'm noting that setup in order to shoot in the middle of the, of the plate. What I'll then do is I'll go into my ballistics app, go into my muzzle velocity, and I'm going to start tweaking that muzzle velocity until... The result that the ballistic solution comes up with matches what the dial on my scope is. So say I was dialed 13 MOA at the start and I needed to bring it up to 13 and a half. I'm going to tweak that muzzle velocity in, in my app until the solution the app gives me is 13 and a half for that exact condition that I was shooting in. Alright, so hopefully in a nutshell I've just covered off truing and sort of how it works and what you're doing. We could really go into the weeds and the mechanics of it and how to get up to this point to start with, um, but there's a lot of information there and hopefully I've covered it off in a simpler, simple manner um, without really getting into the real weeds of the things that you can talk about. Long range shooting, sort of like reloading, you can really get into the weeds or you can try and keep it simple for um, simplicity's sake. What I'm going to do now is show you guys some footage from some long range shooting that I have recently done with this rifle, uh, shooting out to just shy of a kilometre. You'll note the conditions on that day we were shooting were terrible. The winds were very strong and they were really strong gusting winds. So getting on target with the wind gusting and then changing back again was very hard. You could have your elevation all sorted and you could make the shot with your wind hold and then the next shot the wind's changed completely again and you're missing a metre to the right as an example. But it's good, good experience, good training and good learning the conditions. I had cheated a little bit with this rifle. Originally the intent for this video was to go out and true it on a target um, to try and hopefully show you guys um, the process I've just talked about in theory. But I never got to it, um, as I talked about at the start, there's things that have just happened. So what I did do is when I first took this out hunting, I did it the cheap way pretty much and on, on the way to my hunting ground I lined up a rock on a clay pan at 800 yards and I trued it on that rock to make sure my elevation matched up for my dope and then I went hunting and it's been, it's been good ever since and that little true that I did there as an example is another way you can skin that cat if you don't have gongs or anything like that. That's what I did with this rifle and then I've been shooting gongs in the session that I'm going to show you since and it's been good, good to go. So. Anyways, that's enough waffling from me. Hopefully you enjoy this little bit of footage and hopefully someone's took a little bit away from this. Short-barreled rifles, they are the business. Get into it.
one last note I did forget to mention to you guys is when I did true this rifle, if you remember from part one, my muzzle velocities from the chronograph were giving me 2950 feet per second, which I was very happy with. When I trued this rifle out to 800 at the time when I first did it, 2950 was bang on. That's what my elevation was on the dope, and I was good to go. So, trued, confirmed, this rifle shooting the 162 ELDX at 2950 feet per second from the 21 inch barrel. So, very happy. or two. Got it. Hear it? Yeah. Boom fire. Fuck, you got it. Yep. No. no. Uh, right again. Left, uh, right again, yeah.
just to the left. Just to the left? Yeah, you almost got it. Oh, fuck. I couldn't tell if it was the grass above or if it was a target. Let me replay the footage. Beautiful hat. I'll wait for this wind. Hat, bang on. <laughs> 